Hello, viewers. With us, we have our very own Dustin Beavers. He really doesn't need an introduction. <laughs> the whole community in Nacogdoches knows who Dustin is. There's so many things I can say about you, Dustin, but I'm just going to let the audience hear from you directly, buddy. Tell us about yourself. Tell us about Austin Bank. Yeah. Good morning, Juan. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Dustin Beavers. I work at Austin Bank here in Nacogdoches. Uh, I've been in banking for a little over 20 years, and the easiest way for me to say it is I've done everything you can think of inside the retail branch. So I started out as a teller, uh, worked my way up uh, through uh, the different avenues of banking, through customer service representative, banker. I've opened up checking accounts before, money market CDs. Uh, but now I'm, I've been with Austin Bank for a little over eight years. Um, I am the location president and senior vice president for Austin Bank. And so I really control, uh, you know, being out in the community for Austin Bank, uh, kind of being the face, uh, going out and volunteering for things like NEDCO, right, uh, the right. Chamber, United Way, and all the great organizations we have. But really on the day-to-day -day operations is really just running the branch. And we also focus on, on loans and deposits. There you go, there you go. And you mentioned NEDCO, the Chamber, all the things that you're involved in. And that's really one of the uh, the main reasons why we're here with you this morning, Dustin. Mm -hmm. uh, you and I are part of the entrepreneurship program mm -hmm. for NETCO. Yes, sir. And what a great thing they're doing for the community. And we're just trying to add to what they're already doing, which is the purpose of this video, right? Uh, we want to help that next wave of business owners that is coming into the community or they have, they have already been here in the community. So there's so many things that we can talk about, but we're going to focus primarily on what you see from a banker slash financial point of view, right? So if, if someone was to come to you, Dustin, and said, hey, I want to start a business, mm -hmm. right? What would you recommend to that individual? Well, the first thing, and I think with finances, people forget this one. The first thing you do is you got to surround yourself with successful people and partners. So for example, when you first get your first car, you, you probably need a good mechanic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you're taught from a young age to go to your doctor if you're sick. Well, finding a strong banker and having that relationship with that banker, in my opinion, is the most important thing. Right. Ask around, talk to different people. Each bank does something maybe a little bit different. So finding that banker that you can work with or that bank that you can work with mm -hmm. and support. From there, there's other different things uh, that, that happen in business. So, for example, you might need to talk with a CPA, mm -hmm. someone that kind of handles the tax side of it, payroll. Mm -hmm. So, anything you can think of from a banker, a CPA, probably an attorney, mm -hmm. um, having those partners surrounding you, no different than if you get sick, mm -hmm. you're going to go to your doctor mm -hmm. and have that support. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that financial support. And that would be the most important thing that I can do. We, we see so many times where uh, someone is, is on step five and then they come to us and they're like, mm -hmm. hey, we, we need a loan. Well, if we could have talked to them at step one and said, hey, this is what you need to be prepared for, mm -hmm. it, it would just make the situation so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as a fellow banker, I see that too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so important to surround yourself with those individuals with the experience and the know-how. Yes. Early on. Yes, sir. If someone approaches you and says, hey, Dustin, I, I want to apply for a business loan, right? Uh, what are some of the things that you're recommending to that individual? So, again, it depends on the, the, the process and where they're at. If they're already a well-established business, but I know we're focusing on the right. new businesses. And so we're going to talk about things that uh, it really boils down to income and credit. Mm -hmm. There's a huge misconception out there that, uh, you know, there's a business credit versus personal credit. So I really focus a lot of times on the personal credit, the, the people that are going to be signing on behalf of the business mm -hmm. and where they're at in their credit life. Um, we're going to talk uh, also about income. We're going to look at the, the projections for the business, business plans. There's, we just got in talking about uh, the support that Nacogdoches has between the small uh, business development community, uh, SFA, mm -hmm. NEDCO, right, right. the chamber uh, is maybe getting with some of those partners to, to draw out a business plan so we can kind of have an eye on the future on what that's going to look like. Correct, correct. You know, you mentioned all these great organizations around town. I know you and I have talked about this plenty of times. There's great people here in Nacogdoches so willing to help that next person in line. Yeah. Right? Chamber, NEDCO, all these other not-for-profits that are 
on the sideline just waiting to help that individual who wants to open up a business. Right. Nacogdoches is, is is a very special place. And I've, I grew up in Beaumont. I've lived in the Tyler area. And I've lived in the Metroplex. And I've never lived in an area like Nacogdoches. And it's just because of what you said. I've seen so much support. Right. Uh, go in and talk to some of these people. If you're looking at starting a new business, there are so many new businesses in town right now and established businesses. Right. I know so many people, and this is probably more on the Chamber Avenue, and but also right. Nedco. That if you're looking, go talk to some of these business owners. Well, maybe learn from their mistakes. Right. Um, it all revolves. Uh, we we do this all, uh, from bank to bank. You know, I know I've called you before yes. and said maybe, yes. hey, I got this. That's going on. Do right. you have any advice? We we there's so much support surrounding mm -hmm. Nacogdoches, mm -hmm. and if you can surround yourself with right. successful people, yes. uh, no different than me maybe having a mentor in in the bank that is going to go so much further. Don't right. get on YouTube and <laughs> all that other stuff. There's people right up and down North Street here that you can go in and talk to. And I, there's so many p business owners that I know personally that if you walked in and said, hey, I'm thinking about starting a business. Right. What mistakes did you make? What do I need to do? I promise you they'll sit down and talk with you. Correct, correct. And if you can't find one, you come to Nedco and we'll, yeah, we'll find sure, one for, for you. Sure, for sure, for sure. You know, as, as you and I, you know, in talk to other business owners, you hear from their voice. Mm -hmm. they, they are so willing to help that next individual. Uh, you can just give them a phone call. Uh, stop by. Mm -hmm. They're so willing to help and share those experiences that they've gone through while they were opening up their business. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And you, you also mentioned the bank-to-bank -bank help. It's so great that we live in a community like Nacogdoches where, yes, we may have a different logo on our name tag, but we all want to do the same thing. There are great banks and bankers here in town that are willing to support that wave of entrepreneurs. Right. Well, there's great, in my opinion, there's great local banks and there's mm -hmm. great people that live in the community mm -hmm. that are involved in the community like Austin Bank. That's one of our big core missions to get out and get involved in different ways, serve on boards, get out and help the community. Uh, we, we, we try to do this with uh, the younger generation. We go talk to, to students and maybe help right. them when they're right. seven, eighth grade. So when, they, when they're 25 and they want to start that business, right. hopefully some of that comes back into play. But having that local support is, is huge right. and uh, I, I, like I said, I, I can't recommend enough if surrounding yourself with those right. people Correct. and it might just be two or three, but right. um, you know, there's so many things. I was talking to a gentleman this morning, I don't wanna get off topic, but I've been trying to pick up some woodworking. Mm -hmm. Well, I've went to people that said, hey, this is the problems that I'm having. Mm -hmm. what, what do I need to do to fix it? Right. And, and, and so we have those local conversations and everyone I've talked to said, hey, I'll come over tonight and I'll show you. You know, yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll, you know. The spirit. Yes. The spirit. You know, and so as bankers, we're looking for ways to help the business owner. And if they're applying for a business loan, we're looking for ways to, or strengths, to make that their application strong. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're looking for ways to approve their loan, right? But on the other hand, Dustin, what are some reasons that you're seeing why a business loan may not get approved? Probably the most uh, one that I see is revolves around credit. Like I said earlier, there's a big misconception that um, uh, that if you have bad credit in the past, you can start over with this thing called business credit. And mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times when you're looking at an LLC or any kind of set up business, you're still making the, the loan to that person, not necessarily the business. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Again, credit, and it's also probably the the one avenue of the loan structure that probably takes the longest to, to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, if I need to go get some documentation, you could probably get online and apply for that today, mm -hmm. have it this afternoon. Um, so taking care of your credit uh, mm -hmm. starts, the, credit starts the whole the whole process. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, I, I've done this multiple times where you sit down, we'll, we'll apply for a loan. If the credit's not strong enough, what do we need to do to fix exactly. it? I'll flip it around and show exactly. them and say, you know, you got to take care of this, this, and this. Or maybe it's building credit. Right. Having that conversation, and again, I, I want everybody to understand it's no different than going to your doctor. If you had a blood pressure issue, you're going to devise a plan to get your blood pressure under control. Correct. Well, if you have a credit issue, we're right. going to devise a plan. Right. Now it's up to you to execute that plan. Right, right, right. 
us as bankers often tell our customers, keep your finances, quote unquote, clean or organized. But you and I often see sometimes where business owners commingle business and personal. Right. Talk, talk about that. That's why it's important to separate. Well, it's very important. It's probably going to more fall on the CPA side because we've talked about this taxes, right. income, um, being able to support really and make your CPA's job easier when it goes to, to taking care of your financial records. Um, you definitely do not want to commingle those personal funds mm -hmm. and business funds mm -hmm. because it's going to be a nightmare to untangle it. Right, right. Um, and so what we see a lot of times is having that, that separate business account, right. uh, keeping everything business related and everything personal related. So when it comes down to filing your, your tax return and showing your income, there's no, there's no commingling the funds. Uh, this also goes back to the last question we talked about is, you know, if you look outside of credit, um, now we you know, as bankers, we've got to be able to show the income that you can support the loan. So right, we need right. accurate records right. of what you are doing or what you plan to do. Uh, and the more accurate, the better that we can get. Um, and again, that re revolves back to the partner, back right. to the CPA. How do I need to be able to show final ra uh, my financial records or retention? Right. Uh, so that everybody is that everybody's on the same page. Right, if you right. if you come to me and bring me a napkin and say, hey, this is what I made, <laughs> it's going to be difficult right, <laughs> to, right, to right. put that on paper. Right. Man, good record keeping is so fundamental. Right. right. And, and really not just for banking purposes. Right. Right. There's so many aspects of their business that requires proper record keeping. Correct. Well, and then you also, this, this kind of came up, uh, there's also, uh, and I don't want to step too far on the CPA side, but uh, we see a lot of customers that come in that says, hey, I made $100,000 last year. Mm -hmm. Well, when we come down to breaking their tax return down, it, they might have sold $100,000 worth of product, right. but then there's expenses, there's right. payroll, there's advertising, right. there's things. Well, then all of a sudden, once you deduct the, the expenses, um, now it might be a $20,000 profit. So again, it all revolves around understanding that, right. looking at it and making sure that you understand and have someone show you what you're looking at. Correct, correct. So important, so important. Doesn't, doesn't, it, doesn't it feel like we can go on and on and on and give all this uh, perspective on the things that you and I see? Well, this is... This is what's fun for us is having those conversations, um, you know, with this is one of my favorite things to do as a banker is kind of is more of the educational Absolutely. side. When you see someone that maybe got declined for a loan right. uh, for whatever reason and then them come back a year later, right. two years later and say, I did yes. this and this. Yes. And then we approve that loan. That's a very good day. It's yes. been. So what I would say is, you know, what we have coming up is the business resource fair, yes, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll be honest, I was expecting to see about 20 people last year yeah. on our first one. Yes. And there was about, it seemed like 250. Yes. I mean, it was crazy. Right. So the business resource fair this year, I know yes. that's coming up. Yes. Huge, huge thing to come to. Absolutely. There's so many different bankers, CPAs, exactly. attorneys, um, just business so much owners. business owners. There's so much support yes. there. Yes. Uh, that if you're looking to start a business, if you're brand new, um, or if you're even a seasoned business, right. and you're still wanting to pick up something, it'd be a great time to come out and learn some yes. things. So Dustin, let's finish this conversation strong, because again, there's so much more, but we're going to leave those extra questions for the business resource fair, but finish strong. Dustin, why, why should anyone watching this video should be encouraged to go to that business resource fair coming up? I just can't tell you, even me last year when I went, we had it surrounded kind of in the square area, right? There was so right. many, there was insurance companies, right. bankers. I walked around and talked to people. Right. I learned some things. Right. Uh, I just can't stress enough. We, 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 we've talked all morning about right. having that support. Well, right. if you come to that business resource fair, right. you're going to find that support. Right. You're going to walk away for some business cards or some contacts. Right. Something that you can walk away with and maybe follow up on. So right. uh, it was a great event. I'm looking forward right. to this year, and I'm looking yes. forward to the years in the future. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Guys, as you can tell, there's some excitement in our voices. We definitely want you guys to come out. And with that, Dustin, go ahead and give us your last words. Buddy. Well, Juan, I just want to thank you uh, uh, and Nedco for Nedco, everything. For sure. Really, the reason we're having this conversation is because someone, uh, including yourself and Nedco, Larissa, and all the girls down there, 
uh, said this is important and sure. this well, I've got to be able to see this transition from the start to where we are today and uh, every conversation every meeting always revolves around how can we support our business community mm. and and that's that's what's most important to us bankers that's what's it's great for the community of Nacogdoches uh, and so I hope that everyone comes to the business resource sure. fair reach out to Nedco call yeah. Juan call me for sure. uh, it, you just I'm just happy to be able to be in a position where I can help nice nice thank you very much Justin thank you Juan